All right, everyone, you have some more corporate censorious drivel aimed at alt tech uh, with a hope not hate post here. And you can go to the archive link in the description. And they've got a write up on their site, which is, you know, frenetic and stupid. Uh, but they're claiming that BitChute hosts terrorist content, conspiracy theories, dangerous, hateful stuff. And it's time to block BitChute links from being shared on social media. I think Facebook already does. Well, that won't work. You see, there are so many ways around that sort of thing. <laughs> you do realize that you can take the BitChute link, put it on a third party site like a blogger so I can just share that link, correct? There are plenty of ways around it. By the way, this conforms exactly to the way YouTube was treated in its early days. There were so many other groups of people that were worried about YouTube that the corporate lamestream like politicians and stuff, before they said, let's join them, they said, we'll try to beat them. And that's what they're really worried about with BitChute. As its largest user, by the way, and as a libertarian, certainly not recruiting for a terrorist organization. Now, I'm not sure where they're seeing Al-Qaeda links on, on BitChute because it would not conform to US law. Uh, that being said, what they're ultimately worried about, and it's not a coincidence that this comes right after them cracking into the top thousand on Alexa. If you think that that's a coincidence, then I, I got a bridge to sell you and, and some swamp land in Florida and some swamp land in DC. It's going cheap these days. One cent an acre, it's all it's worth. Uh, it smells very bad down there. Anyway, uh, what they're really worried about is BitChute will grow to the size where it starts to absorb or organically absorb significant amounts of mainstream content. See, they're not worried about the edgy content. They're not actually worried about Manazis or something like that. They're not worried about Stefan Molnu talking about eggs on BitChute. It doesn't bother them. They're worried that mainstream content will be there. Why? Because the more mainstream content there, the more people that are beyond the reproach of the censorious bastards of the corporatist era filter into a site like BitChute and make it more tame, the harder it is for them to justify erasing it. If someone, let's say that some major makeup tutorial person says, well, I'm tired of the copyright bullshit on YouTube. I'm tired of, of watching people that I like get banned. I'm tired of dealing with algorithms, demonetizing everything. I'm going to start a BitChute channel. And then all of a sudden a million makeup artist fans are on BitChute. And it starts a tidal wave and, and makeup artists and German gaming channels start moving to Bitchu. Their communities are insular from the sort of material that people like me tend to make. See, this is the whole alt-right alt pipeline bullshit mythology that was spun years ago to try to scare everyone into hating alt tech and not using those sites, which, by the way, spectacularly backfired, which is why I spent two years not usually talking about it at all and just trying to starve it for oxygen. When that happens when you have a community like that. It's semi-isolated from the others. There's no significant crossover. The idea that, for instance, I in, in, uh, interfere in the political process to the point where I'm creating armies of libertarians, well, I'm sure that there are people that become more libertarian listening to me. But ultimately, most of those people are part of a politically connected, they're, 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 that's one of their interests. They like political and news content. They're there for the analysis and the polls and stuff like that too. It's sort of a genre of content. It's totally separate from ASMR videos. It's totally separate from gaming channels. In fact, one of the biggest uh, 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 thorns in the side of the censorious people has been people that casually weigh in on political topics like a JonTron, but ultimately are a totally different genre. That becomes a little PewDiePie or something like that. Oh my God, he did Pepe meme. This is a big problem. He's obviously dog whistling to Nazis. And it was a big, it, they lost. They lost the battle there. They're also worried about BitChute for another reason. This is, this is something that I've given some thought to. Why are they so inordinately worried about alt tech? Because alt tech ultimately is still one one hundredth the size of any of the mainline tech sites. BitChute can be in the top 1,000 of Alexa. It's still 1% the size of YouTube in, in market share at most. <laughs> and it's definitely growing and it'll get higher and that's what they're worried about. The other thing that I think they're worried about is it's the fiscal side, not just in terms of them losing money and maybe BitChute gaining corporate advertisers from edgy companies like a dildo firm or something. They're worried about the fact that BitChute will have proven that through a combination of new technology, fundraising and, and sticking to your guns, it's still possible to be profitable while being a free speech platform. See, as long as it's just the big tech firms all agreeing on the same basic set of censorship to the point where the mainline news crucifies Zuckerberg of all people for not wanting to censor things enough. As long as they're all doing it together, 
they can death spiral all they want. They can just form a vertical monopoly and, and kick people off with impunity. It doesn't matter. But if those people start realizing that there's an alternative, a true free speech alternative that is solvent and will still be there in the future, and they start investing, and they start raising money, and they start raising awareness, and the cool kids, the gen alphas, start flocking there, it's all over for Silicon Valley's old tech. It's all fucking over for them. So they'll do everything within their power, I, I assure you, over the coming year or two. They're going to be attacking all tech harder. But it's always darkest before dawn. If these sites can stick to their guns, that is, to, to stick to fundamentally libertarian principles, innovate, and more importantly, do what the big tech firms used to do with regards to copyright bullshit from the government, like SOPA and ACTA, get their audiences aware and active in defending them. Inst instead of BitChute defending itself fundamentally, Va, he has to go on the talk show circuit, he's got large creators that can do it for him. Partially, we can do that on the mainline tech sites while advertising BitChute's existence. It's perfect. BitChute, for a while, for like a year there, didn't really grow that much. It was very slow. It has picked up recently. In the wake of the last purge of channels on YouTube and some of these other sites, BitChute has begun to steadily build steam. Library has two. Parler has two after absorbing however many hundreds of thousands of new regular users in a 24-hour time span. Every time now that the Silicon Valley firms, in, in part or in whole, purge a group, purge an individual with any uh, significant audience, they move to alt tech and they take other people with them, along with a share of their time usage. And keep in mind, and this is something I've talked about for years, you don't compete for subscribers. You don't even fundamentally compete for views. No two views are created equal. One view is for five minutes, another view is for 20 minutes. They're not the same thing. You compete for people's time usage when you're a creator. You compete for the usage of people's time. This is why algorithms tend to favor people that make long-form videos as opposed to 30-second blurbs. This is why Vine sucked. This is why TikTok has structural issues and has to be probably propped up by the Chinese government to even be profitable at this point. Despite its cultural uh, hegemon sort of character, I think it's ultimately not going to last very long. It's going to be a little bit like blood sports, I guess, or something. Or, or breadline, too. They're terrified of Bitchu. They're, ter they're especially terrified. Let me, let me tell you what they really are terrified of. They're trying to kick commenting functions off the internet. Yahoo News now, by and large, has gotten rid of comments. They're worried that, that Bitshu will create its own comment system. They'll create a streaming functionality. They'll create their own app. Maybe they'll branch out. Maybe they'll team up with other alt-tech sites and they'll crowdfund a whole app store. And, 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 and the problem is that it's difficult for the Silicon Valley firms at some point to really effectively fight back except by scaling back their censorship. Well, they may not have a problem with that. I don't ultimately at the end of the day think that Google in and of itself in a vacuum said, well, we just, we just want to censor people more because we want to be like godlike or something. No, no, no. What happened was money. All the corporate sponsorships tied into Google started threatening them. Well, YouTube's too edgy. Kick these people off. Oh my god, Roger Stone has a Twitter channel. Get rid of him. And so now he's on Parler with like 80 fucking thousand people following him. That's what happens. They're terrified of these groups. It's a David and Goliath story. Years ago, they, they, they said, like three years ago, when they started panning Altec, they said, well, this is just a tiny repository of neo-Nazis. It ultimately doesn't matter at the end of the day. Ha ha ha. Like around the time that I was the first person to hit 10K on the platform. I'm getting my little bronze plaques and stuff still hanging in the office and so forth. They, they, by and large, they didn't really talk about alt tech. They would occasionally criticize it and say, well, it's extreme and stuff. But by and large, they were dismissive of it. You don't see them laughing now, now, do you? They're terrified of it. They're, hor they're horrified. Why do you think they would want to block BitChute links being put elsewhere? Because people are taking those links, making accounts, and then finding that the site isn't actually full of Nazis. It's full of cool content. Yes, there's gaming channels. Yes, there's makeup and bodybuilding and survivalism, how-to. There's fashion. There's celeb drama. There's long-form rants. There's everything that you've got on YouTube, except that it's not censored and there's no adpocalypse. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about the fundamental overhaul of the system. The problem is that a gargantuan site like YouTube or Facebook or something, 
in order to change the way it operates, it's very, very slow. It's not as maneuverable anymore. A little startup like BitChute is capable of changing things on the fly. They can't. So if the whole tech paradigm shifts away from what older Silicon Valley firms are doing, and they're not willing or able to change because of the corporate advertising structure being how it is, and because of all the craptivists that would whine and complain if they said, hey, well, we're going to scale back the censorship now. If Google tomorrow were to announce, well, we're going to stop going after politically edgy YouTube common, uh, content because it's not fiscally feasible. Number one, people have said that they want to be able to view that material. Uh, but number, we just feel that it's wrong. We're going in the wrong direction. We're getting back to our roots or something. Let's say Sundar Pichai comes out and says, you know, he's smoking a joint. And he says, well, I'm, I'm, we're going to get back to our roots. Right wing watch would say, well, they're so foul. Oh, my God, these these Nazi enablers, these horrible people. You'd get it from them. You'd get it from these morons here from Hope Not Hate. You'd get it from a thousand other groups, too. You know, Will Summer would be pitching a fit. He'd be red in the face, ranting and screeching about how he had to see something that he didn't like on, on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. They're afraid of alt tech. This, this sort of thing is happening out of fear. If there's no fear involved, they're not even going to talk about alt tech. They're not going to bother writing hit pieces about how it's full of Nazis which it observably, provably is not. Most of the largest users on the site are just people that are, they haven't even been banned on mainline tech. Like, I haven't been banned anywhere. I've got a BitChute channel, again, the largest on the platform, because I want to be there, because I support all tech, because I think it's the next potential big thing within tech, and I want to be on that goddamn gravy train. And that's another thing that these people are worried about, and I wouldn't be surprised in the next few years that CNN has a BitChute channel. I wouldn't be surprised. Because at some point, they're not going to, once money talks, once they say, hmm, well, we can reach a million extra people if we just put $10 into buying a new shitty webcam and we'll strap it to some aid and have them wander around the bathroom making fart jokes or something like that. Once they realize where the money is, they're going to take the money. That's why Silicon Valley is banning people in the first place. Because all of the corporate sponsors are dangling money over their heads and saying, look, we can make this real good or we can make it real painful. How would you like to, to lose $50 billion this year because we all collectively abandon your site and go advertise with somebody else? The Silicon Valley firms, at the end of the day, are a little bit like an elephant scared of a tiny rat, too. Now, I hate to say it, but they never realized their true strength. They should have gotten together and resisted the censorship and said, what do you expect us to do? We're platforms under 230. We can't editorialize. They should have stuck to the law, too. That's going to be the next problem. Like, Twitter is openly flaunting 230 at this point. They're going to end up getting sued by the federal government. TikTok's going to get banned by the federal government. The Silicon Valley is all topsy-turvy. And it's, it's really telling that the alt-tech revolution, by and large, is not using U.S. platforms anymore. Like, like technically speaking, BitChute is UK-based, although I believe also Thai-based. And I think they're looking into the possibility of abandoning the UK due to anti-free speech legislation. The Western world is losing tech supremacy because of its insistence on becoming like goddamn China's intranet. It doesn't even make sense. It was never necessary. There's no army of Nazis on the internet. It doesn't exist. What you're looking at is memes, trolling, and jokes by and large. People who get together and they flash Mein Kampf and they laugh about it when people are horrified. They're not a Nazi. They're just getting your goat. It's like half of those tanky so-called communists. They're not commies. They go, they have a capitalistic tendy vendor. It takes quarters. They, they, they don't just whisper uh, communistic slogans into it and get free tendies. They use money to get their tendies. They buy it at a store like a normal person. Their iPad made by, made by extremely capitalistic slave labor in China. About as close to real communist authoritarianism as they'd ever be uh, likely to want to get. No, BitChute will do fine, I think. I think that they'll ultimately they'll get through this. This is, Hope Not Hate is not exactly the, the power that it once was, maybe like 10 years ago or something, or whatever. Uh, it's sort of tertiary in importance. Now, you just look at their Twitter engagement. You know, I, I think uh, they are dwarfed by BitChute, and it's quite funny. That's about all. Peace out.